Parental alienation is a form of psychological abuse using coercive control and domestic violence by proxy. This has been scientifically established through 35 years of research and studies. Alienation is not estrangement, and estrangement isn't necessarily alienation. Contrary to popular belief, there are 14 effective diagnostic tools to distinguish parental alienation from estrangement. Use multiple assessment tools to ensure a proper and definitively clear diagnosis that can't be easily refuted. While the following list isn't in any specific order, the first three tools are all part of the five-factor model and should always be used and used together. Number one, the five-factor model. It's short, simple, and easy and presents an opportunity for professionals across the social, legal, and mental health professions to understand what parental alienation is in a straightforward, evidence-based manner. All five things need to be present so there's no mistake because the treatment for alienation and abuse is the opposite approach. Factor one, a child manifests contact resistance or refusal, that is, avoids a relationship with one of the parents. Factor two, there was a prior positive relationship between the child and the now rejected parent. That means that whatever flaws the targeted parent has, it didn't prevent a close, loving attachment bond to the child who's now rejecting them. Factor three, there's the absence of abuse or neglect. You need accurate ways of determining if a parent has been abusive and don't want to misidentify any abusive parent as an alienated parent. Factor four, the favored parent has engaged in many of the 17 primary parental alienation strategies that foster the child's unjustified rejection of the other parent. Factor five, the child behaves like an alienated child. There are eight behavioral manifestations of parental alienation that differentiate alienated kids from non-alienated kids. Abused children and alienated children don't treat their parents the same way. Second, Dr. Richard Gardner identified eight behaviors to distinguish alienated children from abused children. This diagnostic tool should be used for the fifth factor of the five-factor model. Behavior one, a campaign of denigration in the past, present, and future. First, the past. If you ask an alienated child to tell you about a good memory of a parent, the child will say, I never had good times with that parent. The child will deny being happy in photographs with the parent. They erase the past. The present. The children are hostile, rejecting, provocative, arrogant, entitled, rude, and nasty in general. The future. If you ask, what could your parent do to fix this and make you happy? The answer, nothing, never, can't happen. Behavior 2. Weak, frivolous, and absurd reasons for rejecting the alienated parent disproportionate to complaints. They just don't make sense. Behavior 3. Lack of ambivalence. One parent is seen as all good and the other is seen as all bad. There's no criticism at all of the favored parent. Behavior 4. The lack of remorse for the shoddy treatment of a targeted parent, as if one parent gave the child permission to break the other parent's heart. It's brutal, painful, and heartbreaking, erasing the other parent completely as if they just don't care at all. Behavior 5. The independent thinker phenomenon. The alienated child goes out of the way to protect the involvement of the favored parent. Behavior 6. The use of borrowed scenarios and speaking in language of the favored parent. The child has become brainwashed from the indoctrination by the favored parent and then believes the lies him or herself. The child thinks the ideas are their own even though they don't know what they're saying. Behavior 7. Reflexive automatic support for the favored parent. The kids will take the favored parent's side in every internal conflict. The favored parent is always right. Behavior 8. The spread of animosity to friends, family, and anyone related to the targeted parent. 
anyone who has anything good to say about the targeted parent is cut off. Even abused children don't show these eight behaviors. Abused children still have positive memories of the abusive parent. They provide information of actual mistreatment. They don't start worshiping the other parent. They can still see the favored parent's faults. They don't generally lack remorse. They're just mad that the parent hurt them, but they still feel badly when they set appropriate limits with the abusive parent. They don't take the other parent's side in every argument just because they were abused. They don't cut off friends and family of the abusive parent. Research shows that abused children don't generally reject the abusive parent. The eight common behavioral manifestations of alienated children make up one of five factors for establishing parental alienation. Third, the Baker Strategies Questionnaire, or BSQ, is used to collect information about the specific alienating behaviors or strategies that a child had been exposed to and or a parent is currently engaging in. There are 17 primary alienating behaviors or strategies. The presence of these alienating behaviors of the favored parent is one part of the five-factor model in diagnosing parental alienation. The strategies are referring to targeted parent by the first name, bad-mouthing, creating an environment in which the child doesn't feel free to display photos of, talk about, or engage in activities with the targeted parent, interfering with communication, limiting contact, telling the child the target parent doesn't love him or her, creating the impression that the targeted parent is dangerous, cultivating dependency, forcing the child to choose, forcing the child to reject the targeted parent, withdrawal of love, confiding in the child, asking child to spy on targeted parent, asking child to keep secrets from the targeted parent, changing child's name to remove association with the targeted parent, referring to step-parent as mom or dad, and encouraging the child to do the same, withholding medical, academic, and other important information from the targeted parent, and keeping the targeted parent's name off of medical, academic, and other relevant documents. The presence of these alienating behaviors makes one part of the five-factor model for diagnosing parental alienation. Fourth, the Baker Alienation Questionnaire identifies alienated children using a paper and pencil measure that's short, easy to administer, and easy to score objectively. Children who had been court-ordered for reunification therapy, specifically for parental alienation, consistently responded in an extremely one-sided, all-or-nothing fashion. One parent was denigrated and the other was idealized. The BAQ discriminates well between alienated and non-alienated children. Fifth, Brickland Perceptual Scales. The BPS was developed specifically for use in child custody evaluations to define and quantify children's attachment to and perceptions of their parents. Estranged children are likely to manifest ambivalence, both positive and negative, feelings toward both parents on the BPS scale. Alienated children, on the other hand, are likely to see the preferred parent as totally good and the rejected parent as totally bad. Brickland appears to have been measuring a concept called splitting, even though not specifically mentioned by name. Sixth, Parental Acceptance Rejection Questionnaire, or PARC. The PARC is a questionnaire that children complete regarding their perceptions of their mothers and fathers accepting and rejecting behaviors. A study of the PARC gap which is the difference between the child's PARC score for each parent, mother and father, found that this test was 99% accurate in distinguishing alienated from non-alienated children. Seventh, red flag behaviors, color-coded calendar, and three strikes and you're out program. The red flag and coded calendar tools use numbers and colors to help show a pattern of behavior, and it's coupled with a program called three strikes and you're out. This helps courts determine if there's a pattern
pattern of behavior and whether a parent is going to cooperate with the court's orders. Eighth, alienated family relationship scale. It's a study administered to children. A factor and reliability analysis confirmed that the two alienation scales, father alienating against mother and mother alienating against father, were reliable and valid. Nine, the Bain Anthony Family Relations Test. This test explores children's perceptions of their relationship with family members. Children in the alienated group who hadn't been abused or neglected by their targeted parent expressed almost exclusively negative and hostile feelings toward them, while also expressing almost exclusively positive, affectionate feelings toward their preferred parent. 10. The Parental Alienating Behavior Scale It consists of six items regarding each parent and was administered to mothers, fathers and adult children to determine the presence of parental alienating behaviors. The 11th, Hans Warshak Scale of Alienating Behaviors, it adds 14 additional questions to the previous tool, the Parental Alienation Behavior Scale, to make it an even more accurate and reliable testing measure. 12th, The Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory is a well-established psychological test which is commonly used in parenting time evaluations. Alienating mothers were more likely to complete the questionnaire in a defensive manner, striving to appear as flawless as possible. Parents who induced alienation in their children got higher scores which indicated conditions such as splitting and projective identification targeted parents scored normally. 13. Parental Alienation Scale It distinguished alienating parents from targeted parents and alienated children from non-alienated children. It comes from a questionnaire completed by evaluators familiar with the family based upon both the parents and the child's activities and behaviors. 14. Roland's Parental Alienation Scale is a questionnaire for parents designed to capture the behavioral manifestations of parental alienation in their children. In conclusion, to avoid confusing victims of parental alienation with children who've been abused, these assessment tools should be used, preferably three or more, and the results should be compared against each other. These diagnostic models are accurate and effective ways of distinguishing child victims of parental alienation from child victims of physical abuse and neglect. It's critical to use these diagnostic tools not only to help with custody decisions, but also health care treatment, because treatment for parental alienation is vastly different from treatment for abuse and neglect. Written by Joan Cloth Zanard and produced by the Law Center. Click the link in the description portion of the video to learn more about them.